Sears stands behind every product they sell, no matter how small the purchase. We're at a Sears store to find out why Sears is where America shops. I do a lot of shopping for out-of-town family, and anything I buy at Sears, if I buy it here, and they, for some reason, the size doesn't fit, they don't like the color, they can go to any Sears store and exchange it without any problems. You could order from the catalog and have them ship it to wherever you want, anywhere in the United States. Sears for America Shop. I asked the guys, I gave them a year each. I wanted to look through the Sears catalogs of the years I gave them. I kind of went in a rough age order and I gave them $60 each for Christmas. They were very lucky to get $60 each and uh, to see what they could come up with. I did say to them, just don't just buy action figures. So I asked them to come up with at least, you know, a couple of items which weren't action figures or action figure related. And I've got to say, I've seen their lists and I'm quite excited by it. So we will start with Mr. The, well, the oldest fellow in the uh, podcast, I think. I gave Andy Preston 1979. If you want to tell us a bit about your, your Christmas catalogue. Andy P has just admitted to turning 50 and I'll be 52 in February. I'm feeling quite insulted, Pete. You know, I didn't have your, your birth in front of me, so I had to kind of go, I thought, well, 79, 80, well, I've got to give one or the other. And Andy, you know, you, maybe Jason's just youthful, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you got 1979, and I think you've done quite well, you two, actually, on this, because uh, you've probably got more more items in this these years than I thought there would, would be, actually. So come on, Preston, give us a list. And I think you've done well. I think you've done well. Right. Thank you, Pete. Well, with my 60 bucks, I've decided to go for a good mix of stuff. Like you say, not all action figures. So uh, thinking partly what's, an in, what's interesting items, what's a good spread, what would I have liked to have received mm. uh, in my Christmas stocking in 1979? So uh, first item I've chosen for a lovely cheap price of $7.99 are the perma-pressed Boba Fett pyjamas. Comfortable jersey knit of 100% polyester. Doesn't get better than that. The pullover top has a print on the front. The neck and wristlets on the long sleeves are rib knit. The pants have elasticated waist, fly front, long lebs, rib knit at the ankles. It doesn't get better than that, does it? And the graphic on the front, it is a lovely image. The, these pyjamas come in a very fetching shade of yellow and brown. How much more mm. 70s could you get? And on the front, you have got a picture of Boba Fett firing his flamethrower and a lovely Star Wars logo. So, yeah, I would have been made up to have those pyjamas as a kid. So that's my first choice. Next one, pushing the boat out. This is my most expensive item at $19.95. This is a Darth Vader Star Wars watch. The catalogue description, this is a a, a watch with popular characters from Star Wars pictured on the dial. Chrome-plated base metal case and back. Convenient sweep second hand. It's imported, it tells me here. A watch with Darth Vader printed on the dial. So this is a it's it's a, a, a very common uh, promotional image of Darth. He's standing there with his cape billowing out and he's got his lightsaber up across his chest. Uh, Star Wars logo alongside him and Darth Vader. And uh, yeah, standard analog digit uh, analog watch. I would have been very happy to have that on my wrist on Christmas Day in 1979. Next choice is the Star Wars movie viewer. Didn't get this in the UK, so this was, uh, I, I think, a US release only. And uh, it, th- th- there's a handy guide in the catalogue that says how it works. The movie cassette snaps into the plastic viewer. You can view the movie forward, backward, fast or slow by turning the crank. No batteries are needed. So you get a Star Wars movie viewer and a cassette. You could also order extra cassettes, destroy the Death Star, battle in hyperspace or alien terror. I've not gone for any of those. I've just gone for the standard movie viewer and one cassette at a grand price of $8.97. Oh. Moving on. Bargain another bargain. Another bargain. Quantity as well as quality with my choices, Pete. So the next choice oh, is the Star well. Wars story of Star Wars book and cassette. So while you're watching the pictures from your movie viewer, you can have this story of Star Wars playing on your cassette player. So this is the, uh, the the set, including a book and matching cassette. It says from the soundtrack, but uh, they've actually got it wrong in the catalogue because this is the story of Star Wars. I think Spoons mentioned this earlier on. Book and cassette, a grand total of $7.99. Absolute bargain. Next choice is the Star Wars Play-Doh action set. Kids can mould Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, R2-D2 and Princess Leia. The set includes a plastic X-Wing fighter that holds R2, Luke or any other figure from the set. 
playmat featuring a cutaway view of the Death Star depicting C-3PO, Stormtroopers, garbage dump, control room and other action areas from the original movie. Three hinged moulds, a trimmer and three cans of Play-Doh, red, yellow and blue. Not sure how you mould Darth Vader with red, yellow and blue Play-Doh, but there we go. Well, Andy, if you knew your colour technology, then if you mix them all together, you should get a sort of mouldy brown. Yeah, but that would have to do. Which, which, as we all know, is the colour of Darth Vader. So, <laughs> yes, yes, in certain lights. Uh, absolutely, with your eyes closed. So that is the cheapest item on my list. That is four dollars ninety-seven. And oh, the last item, nineteen seventy-nine. I am going to pick the four new action figures. You could only get them in Sears. so And they come with a cardboard backdrop as well. This is the Sears Cantina Adventure Set. This is Hammerhead, Greedo, Walrus Man, and, of course, Snaggletooth. Hopefully you get the blue one. Some unlucky kid's got the red one. But uh, that is the last choice on my list, $7.88. And I have $2.25 left over to go down to the um, to the, the, the quickie mart or whatever they have in america and get a few packs of trading cards and bubble gum fantastic that's a hell of a list isn't it that's not yeah, bad for 60 a... bucks is it now the other old guy jason i'm surprised you didn't just go straight for the figures but you've you've gone for some right eclectic items on this one yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of looked at this from a kind of, um, you know, what I'd want at Christmas, and also from a collecting point of view, the, the you know, the play sets and figures these days are ten a penny. You can get them quite easily. The things I've picked are things which, you know, don't show up very often. So, um, you know, once again, I, I, I've gone for uh, permapress in a big way, and as well as a set of pajamas, which are, pajamas are now eight ninety nine a set. I've gone for the the ones with the the droids on the front. And uh, just to put over the top of that, I've got the permapress robe as well. Classy. And robe is eleven ninety nine. Got all that, and obviously to keep my pajama bottoms up, I've got a Star Wars stretch elastic belt for two ninety nine. That looks absolutely fantastic. And then of course to get out of bed in the morning, I have got a Star Wars alarm clock for a whopping twenty four dollars and ninety five cents. But this thing looks amazing. It says it plays C2PO and R2D2 continuously with various phrases until you tell them to stop. So you've got R2D2 goes beep, beep, and then C2PO says, what R2D2 is saying is that you have to get up right away. And then R2D2 says, beep, beep. And this time C2PO says, R2, you should be so polite. This little rebel is going to be late. At which point you never guess what R2D2 says. He says, beep, beep. And then CCPO says, don't forget to wind the clock so we can wake you again tomorrow. So I just think that the whole, the whole thing looks amazing. I haven't seen one of those before. So I mean, the watches you see all the time, but I've never seen that alarm clock before. So I've got one of those. I'm kind of out of money at this point. So I've gone for, the last thing I've gone for is a plus Chewbacca. You've got your, your pajamas on, you've got your robe, you've, you've woken up and you've got a nice little plush little toy to cuddle under the tree in the morning oh. and the plush toy cost me nine dollars and 99 and that leaves me a dollar and nine cents um <laughs> over so there you go now we say you can't buy much for that for a dollar these days but then you could probably get all sorts of stuff probably get a car right um that good list again jason well done and avoided the action figures i was quite surprised then boons now you had 1981 and again, sixty dollars. So, uh, and I think you you did some good spending here, but some high price items. The things seem to shoot up in price because because uh, Andy mentioned a watch. I'm going to start off with a watch on page twenty three. One of them I'm quite intrigued by because unfortunately there's a big rip on the scan of the page, so we can't quite oh. see the uh, the image. But it's a it's a proper watch with with numbers around the dial and, and moving hands. That's actually that's a couple of dollars more expensive than the ones I've gone for. But there's two other ones. There's there's ones with R2D2 and C3PO with a black background. And considering the year 1981, one with Yoda on. Imagine being as a kid, I would have wanted the latest thing. I would have wanted Yoda. But more mature me would go for that that black one with R2 and 3PO. It's very iconic, and that's it. $19.95 and it's got hours and minutes constantly visible with a push button to see seconds, month and date. Programmed calendar 
months adjust from 28 to 31 days automatically. Now, that's just, my watch today doesn't adjust automatically. It winds me mad. That's, uh, that's brilliant. So that's, that's my first one at, at 1995. We're then going to fast forward to page 117. And this, this has got the nostalgia going. This is, this, you, both of you mentioned pyjamas so far. These, I suppose these are technically pyjamas, but it's called footed sleeper in a comfortable knit or fuzzy fleece. So I've gone for, I've gone for <laughs> item number three. This is the Star Wars two-piece blanket sleeper. Now, I can, I can imagine the feel of this. I'm sure as a toddler or not much more, maybe three or four, I had a yellow thing like this with feet on it, and it was dead warm. It really was. This is the Star Wars. So this is detailing Star Wars screen print of Yoda and Luke on light blue fleece with contrasting rib knit trim. Bottoms have elastic waist. And this is this is it. This is the key thing. This is why you need this. Skin Go resistant on. vinyl soles on feet. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and a bargain. At fourteen ninety nine, it's unfortunately I couldn't have had this because this is only starts at age at sizes eight to ten, and twelve to fourteen. I'm sure it's a lot younger when I had one of these, and I think you'd be given some grief, wouldn't you, if you go around in your skid resistant feet as a as an older older boy. <laughs> I'm glad you put feet in there because like it's <laughs> funny every time. Yeah. Skid resistant pajamas. That's what we all want. <laughs> exactly. Even even more so when you get past forty years old. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the next one we're going to get jump forward quite far. There's a lot of pages in these books. I haven't quite realised. Yeah. It's page five one seven, and this technically isn't Star Wars. This is the Easy Care Slumber Bag. Mm. And this has got it's basically the the spacecraft one, uh, number eight. So the, the prices for these are on the page before. If you buy two or more, they're only eighteen ninety nine dollars. But this one on its own is uh, is nineteen ninety nine. But I thought the spacecraft on this um, this easy care slumber bag. So these are an acid. So they just sound delightful. Two pounds of polyester insulation. Oof. Acetate and nylon brushed tricot liners. This is a, a fire risk, aren't they? Full length separating zippers. Zip any two identical bags together to make a double bag. Ooh. Two carrier ties for easy roll up and storage. Insulation is quilted to help prevent shifting and retain heat. Essentially, it's a polyester sleeping bag. But the <laughs> spacecraft one, essentially, the middle of the ship, is that not the Millennium Falcon? They've just added um, kind of a rod to the front and back to make it like a long craft. But essentially, that's the Falcon in the middle of there. So that that jumped out, and I and I quite like that for that reason. So um, so basically, I'm off my sixty dollars. I was I was struggling to find, you know, that that, that 1999. So I'm a, I'm a fifty five dollars ish. There we are. But as I started off this uh, this show saying, I live life on my credit card. I'm going I'm going over. I'm gonna, it's going over. I'd it's always going over. the the American lad who lived opposite had the uh, the hand solo blaster when I was growing up, and I thought it was brilliant. I'm not even sure I was aware of the stormtrooper one. So okay, it's not an action figure, but item two on page six three eight, the classic laser rifle at seventeen ninety nine, takes me uh, takes me a bit over, but it's just great, isn't it? Item number two, the Empire Strikes Back laser rifle, authentically styled with two electronic sounds, one activated by trigger and one by rapid fire action button and trigger. Sighting scope requires two D batteries, not included. Order on page 637. That's just great, isn't it? So I've got I've gone over by a bit more than ten dollars. Over he owes Santa money. I'm loving the 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 bag thing. The fact <laughs> that you can like rip it open and then add another se- section to it from another one. But uh, none of them were particularly. I don't think any of those bags are licensed, were there? It was, like, it was like a strawberry shortcake ripoff, and then <laughs> there was like a, the Crayola ripoff was brilliant. Sleeping bags in those days were great because uh, maybe that's why me and Mrs. Spoons are, are meant for each other. We both have our Careful. original '70s sleeping bags from when I was in Cubs <laughs> go camping with this red red nylon thing, and she's got a blue one. And, you know, if you go to a camping shop with all these sort of triple whatever insulation, multi-tog things with hoods, they're, they're not designed to be slipped together. They're not double sleeping bags. 
these seventies ones, when we go camping, we zip <laughs> zip the two two uh, polyester whatever they are things together, and we got a double sleeping bag. It's great. <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, no naked flames, yeah. but um, but yeah, it's uh, they're, they're warm enough. Yeah, we always do that as well. Um, um, if it, if it was a particularly cold night in the caravan, and when we were very very young, we used to get, they used to like put put our sleeping bag and zip it up with uh, mom and dad's sleeping bag. We used to all get the same sleeping bag because it was absolutely <laughs> freezing in the caravan. Heat, yeah. So he's gone over, spent his money. Um, now I had a bit of a problem on mine. Now it's weird because I mean, uh, mine was at nineteen eighty two. There's only seven pages of Star Wars, and some of it you've already mentioned uh, uh, the clocks and stuff. So, but um, it, there was some good, there was some good stuff. There was just um, things with times were changing, I guess. You know, '82. Um, I guess you know, Empire was you know, well, not a distant memory, but two years ago. Return of the Jedi, obviously, there was nothing ready for Return of the Jedi. So I'm in the, in that kind of like cold period. But there was some stuff, so let's not uh, let's not avoid it. Um, there was the Empire Strikes Back by Parker Brothers, and they did, and it, this was expensive. This was twenty nine dollars ninety nine cents. But it was the description that that uh, that I loved. Uh, the Empire Strikes Back by Parker Brothers. When the Force is with you and your snow speeder is rainbow hued, you're invincible. Well, there we go. That's a topical. Uh, color thing for these days now this is why i got stuck a little bit because um <laughs> there wasn't apart from like going down the extra figure room, uh, there was micro collection stuff and of course you know me and my collection i do love it i don't have much of it but i have some um all the other sets there they were expensive so now i would have been really tempted to have the best spin wilson because i would still want it now that was 32 dollars 49 so that's a little bit out um then they had like the hoff sets and they were expensive as well but the catalog did actually have a little bit of a, an offer going on, which I didn't take up. Obviously, I couldn't afford it, so I went for the Millennium Falcon for nineteen ninety nine. But um, and there was a there was an offer on the pages. You can get like a rebate um, uh, promotion. So if you you can save two ways on these new small scale figures, get cash rebates on combo sets, only number seventeen and eighteen, the expensive ones, plus a gift, and they will give you six free figures when you buy any two individual items. But you can only buy the one of the two expensive ones. So well, yeah, there was an offer there. So I went for the Millennium Falcon Micro Collection. I think uh, you know that had been a good investment at the time. So I was left with a few few dollars left over. I thought, you know what, I, I want a couple of cheapy items. So I went down and got a couple of the um, shampoo sets, and you get you get a bit of discount if you buy a couple. So um, I thought uh, <laughs> I thought the description was again quite comedy. Makes a great stocking stuffer. Detailed replica detailed replica you want to see a picture of uh, a detailed replica of uh, luke skywalker um that's not it um these uh, these bath things so yeah a little bit of a uh, little bit of a play there um so detailed replica of these famous characters lets kids have fun both in and out of the tub makes shampooing less of a chore what you talking about i love shampoo and gives the kids something to play with after the bottle's empty clean fresh fragrance and they were only five bucks each i had a couple of those i thought i'd go for a luke and a darth so i uh, just a couple of dollars short of uh, of my thing so uh, again i'm going down the shop gets better bowl gum but yeah some uh, cracking items in there but not that many now rich i gave you 1983 so you should be right in the middle of lots of star wars stuff see when you pete there weren't actually that many pages for 1983 what? So the first item I've picked was on page uh, one, no, it was on page 17, and it was a bonded, uh, try not to get too excited, Spoons, it was a bonded leather belt, oh. and th- these were available with two different buckles. So one was Darth Vader, which is obviously the one that I was going to go for, and the other one was Jabba the Hutt. And I just found it amusing that they would put Jabba the Hutt on a belt, especially for somebody who was ordering the large size, perhaps. I just thought, uh, yeah, that's a bit... Uh, hmm. You're quite apt if you've got a bit of tummy hanging over, mm. you know, then you could, you could sell him Jabba. Possibly. Uh, so it came in three sizes, small, medium, and large. Small was 22 to 24 inch, medium was 26 to 28, and large was 30 to 32. Um, so the Darth Vader belt, well, bonded leather belt with the... Uh, Vader belt buckle was the one that I went for, and that came in at just three ninety nine. How amazing is that? Three ninety nine. Right. Okay. Now this is where I've got quite clever on the next one. 
So I looked at the next page and I thought, oh, well, it's 1983. Obviously, I'm going to be absolutely hammered with the typical action figures. The next page was just play sets and I thought, no, nah, whatever. But on page 161, so I've went from page 17 to 161, um, there were some three packs. And I looked at the three packs and one of them leapt out, number 13. Okay, so I'm just going to read the description of number 13 and see if any of you like, know why I picked this one. <laughs> so number 13 is a three pack. It includes a Gamorian God, a Squid Head, a Bib Fortuna. And those were available for just seven ninety nine. Uh so why did I pick that one out, guys? Anyone? Radio silence, Richard. Radio silence. Absolutely, everyone's enthralled, right? I'm gonna put the image in text chat for you to look at and go, Oh my god. <laughs> uh I'm assuming it's simply with the colour, Richard, yes. I would think. So uh yeah. So uh pre production, uh Bib Fortuna with a red cape there. Um, yeah, quite happily, that would set me up for life. I think this one time I had one of those. So I actually, unlike you guys, I actually shopped smartly. So, yeah, so uh, I, I'm already way ahead now anyway. On, uh, it's game over. Jason, you might as well not even bother. So, Is there not a disclaimer, though, Rich, that the nope. um, the, nope. the figure that you... The nope. figure that you get sent nope. might differ from uh, what <laughs> what you buy. Oh, yeah, well, I may have ordered the Darth Vader leather belt and got sent a pack of barbecue skewers. You know, you, you, you can't go down that route. So three-pack Bib Fortuna, seven ninety nine. dollars uh, That is an absolute bloody bargain. Right. And then I thought, okay, um, I, I don't want to go down the action figure route. I've already, you know, picked the, picked the one that's going to, you know, earn me a fortune. Lots of interesting things. I mean, I, I thought the e- Ewok vest and underpants set. I thought, uh, as a kid, as I had one of them, you know, nah, that's, that's not for me. That's... You'd get beaten up, wouldn't you? Yeah, beaten up, yeah, Ewok. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I then hummed and hard over the R2D2 toy tote, but I thought, mm, 83, I probably would have equally not wanted them. However, on page 164, I spotted uh, the bookcase, and it's basically it's a whole a whole bedroom um, done out in Star Wars, and you know there was two different bookcases, the table and the chairs. So I thought, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, really push the boat out here and spend quite a bit of money. So I went with one of the bookcases, priced at thirty nine ninety nine. Now I can hear you score now. How much? How on earth can you keep all this under $60? Well, yeah, so the bookcase, uh, it's a bookcase and toy chest, one shelf, two sliding doors, sliding chalkboard door for more storage, measuring 32 by 18 by 41 inches high. Um, You know, absolutely fantastic that. So, yeah, delighted with that. And then I had a bit of cash left over, so I thought, right, okay, I've got my bookcase. I didn't have enough for the other one. Uh, so what would I go for? And I went for the Jabba the Hutt corkboard at five ninety nine. So at least I can pin things up to a wall because I don't know for some reason people seem to think that kids like pinning things, otherwise wouldn't make corkboards. And uh, not keen on the Jabba the Hutt himself, but it's because of the amount of characters on there. So you've got Fett, you've got Luke Jedi, the Warrior God, or two, and um, three three Julia Bush. So the Max Rebo band in there as well, Bib Fortuna. So I thought, yeah, that's a that's a nice little set there. So even buying all of that and, you know, having a, a five-figure item, I'm still left with $2.04 spare <laughs> to pay off part of Andy Spoons' debt for the amount that he's demanded so, off Santa. Good choices, Richard. I was going to say, I, I, I was actually thinking, I wonder whose selection would now be worth more, but I think you probably uh, nailed it with that uh, three-pack. Huh? <laughs> no, as in, as in the cumulative items what they'd be worth now if you had them all mint in box. Yeah, some some great choice there, guys. Now, who would you... I'm going to ask you to vote for someone else, not yourself, obviously, because that'd be selfish. Let's see if we if we have a clear winner. Oh, even though Spurs went over, it's cheeky. There's some cracking crap in there. <laughs> Richard's, um, Richard's items... Oh, you know what? I'm annoyed by myself, actually, because, I mean, Andy's... Oh, I know Andy. I've got to go, I've got to go Preston. I, I a good go, selection of stuff. Yeah, sheer volume, Preston. But then is he is he getting the 1979 advantage? I think probably. prices increased probably. massively in the 80s. That's what that's my take on that. But, but I mean, I got, uh, Richard's items are decent as well. I mean, it's a good, still a good selection, even though he's he's got above himself and on his high horse. The, the court board's good. I, li- I love the yeah, also three packs fun. 
the belt, you know, jab a belt with your tummy over the top. I mean, the bookcase, that bookcase, oh, God, that would have been awesome, wouldn't it? It's almost a play set. But I'll go with Preston. I'm going with Preston. Why don't you, oh. why don't you Spoons? Oh. I think I'm going to go with Andy P as well. Although, I mean, oh. point that his, his pyjamas are half the price of mine a mere <laughs> two years later. <laughs> I don't I don't think mine are skid resistant. Uh, well, <laughs> you have to pay for that, I suppose, don't you? What are you, Jason? Who are you picking? Who do you reckon has got the best uh, selection? I'm, I'm going, if I get that pre-production uh, um, action figure, I'm having some of that. Thank you. Your Falcon, Pete. That's um, minimum of yeah. three, four hundred item now. It is, but I think Richard will win on the cost. But Rich, who would you choose then if you weren't choosing? Obviously, you can't choose yourself. Yeah, I think Andy Preston's uh, put a little bit more effect on it than the other guys have. <laughs> Well, it's got more wires. I had seven pages, and two of those were lists. I found one that didn't even have Star Wars in the title. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got a page of rebates. Is one of my pages, which is actually I didn't, I don't even know what that means. This rebate thing, I seem to be obsessed with it. You get all this stuff on the cheap. You get like um, if you prove a postage and stuff, and if you send the rebates page, but it's kind of weird. Yeah, I stand it up for myself. I had a page of index. That that was that was one of mine that it threw up. So <laughs> I didn't pick anything off the index page. You were after the ladies' lingerie section, weren't you? Come on. Yeah. Of of my my fellow contestants here, spoons. I'm sorry you've got over. I'm sorry that that's uh, that's out. Uh, Rich is pick Rich is picking prototypes that you wouldn't have known about in 1983. So Rich is out. <laughs> <laughs> That's down to Pete and Jason, oh, and I yeah. think of the two, let me see, I <laughs> am going with the rainbow-hued invincible snow speeder. I love that image. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna cast my vote. Oh, Pete, yeah. Like. Oh, so uh, um, Preston wins then. <laughs> so we will turn in the new year with a the our normal section, and we'll pick another licensee. But uh, guys, well done. That was some great effort in there. Hello there. You may remember me from The Empire Strikes Back. Now, don't forget to hit subscribe and also click the bell for notifications.